All right, Watcher. Shall we read the patch notes? Nah. Let's brawl. What you got for me? I haven't played Watcher in like a week, so presumably everything's either the same or different. Fuck patch notes, watchers infinite or die. Seems possible. Shall we go random boss relic? Black star. Okay. Watchers die. Four elites in a row? Mm, yes. That'll be great, thanks. Watch your infinite is stronger. Is it? In which way is it stronger? It's interesting. I should have just defended three times. This is gonna deal approximately infinity damage. I could have saved one health. Crush joints, sash whip, and third eye. Go for crush joints to kill elites with, I think. She has better card draw. Oh, well. Then. I guess we enter calm and hope to draw a bunch of attacks the next time we draw eruption. Seems fine. And if we don't draw a bunch of attacks the next time we draw eruption, well, low state, enter calm, enter wrath. And you can enter calm, and you can enter wrath. You can enter calm, and you can enter wrath. Eight relics in act one. If we're unlucky, sure. Go battle him. Could go battle him. It seems okay against Slime Boss and against Lagavulin. I don't know. Doesn't seem great. That might be alright. Check out the Battle Him upgrade. The Battle Him upgrade. Two smites. A lot of smites. Feels like a two card combo with the one that reduces the cost of retained cards. Feels like if we don't get that, it's much less good. It does deal a lot of damage, though. Just lucky. Grab a just lucky. I think it's all right. The other cards there were like, eh. Whenever you play a card that retains, deal 3 damage to a random enemy. Whenever you play a card that retains, deal 3 damage to a random enemy. Is that good? Is there some reason that that's good? Wallops for sale. Wallop seems good. A Nocturne Habeo again. Oh my god, they killed Master Reality. I don't remember what Master Reality used to do, but yeah, that didn't seem incredible, that's for sure. Whoops. Uh, hmm. Whoa! They have thrown a coin at it. Ah! Fear my coin! Let that be a lesson. Master Reality buffs smites. Yeah, a little bit. Sure. Like, yep, that's true. Not wrong. Uh, 
Imagine being weakened and only dealing 18 damage for one energy. Deal three damage to a random enemy three times. Enter Wrath. Shuffle this card into your draw pile. Whoa, that is much different from what it used to be. Deal three damage to a random enemy three times. Enter Wrath and shuffle this card into your draw pile. It seems like an infinite enabler. It seems like an insane infinite enabler. You enter Wrath after you deal the damage, though? That's so weird. If the last card played this combat was an attack, apply one weak. I'm just going to go with this Ash Whip. Try to survive through these elite fights. And he's ready to crush joints, but he keeps on forgetting what he w wrote down. The whole crowd grows so loud. Follow up. Just lucky two. Eh. I'm alright with one just lucky. Alright, three elites in a row. Fight time. I should do slam poetry. How do you know that I don't? Um, I think I play Eruption. You've been listening to a lot of rap lately. What should you put on your list? I don't know. I don't know. When I want to listen to rap, I listen to a Pandora station that plays rap that I don't have. That many artists that I think are like super, super incredible compared to other artists or whatever. He stayed in Wrath for three turns in a row there. Draw two cards and exit your stance. Yup. Okay. Good. I think battle him in play seems like sort of the point here. This is our last turn before Lagavulin wakes up. I have five energy. Um, I think I just let it wake up. Six, eighteen. Oh, I'm. I was two damage short. Did I do it in the right order? Maybe I did it in the wrong order. Very unfortunate. Bottled Tornado. The start of your turn, scry three. Upgrades to innate. Bottled Tornado. I want Battle Him in my starting hand. Maybe? I don't know. Not very much. I put Foresight in my starting hand instead. Consecrate is nice. Eh, maybe. Just 
Just Lucky has successfully turned off Art of War. Good work, Just Lucky. Also a pretty good turn. I think I screwed this one up, though. I think this one's on me. I have five energy next turn. How did the Long War campaign end? Wait. It ended? You know something that I don't know, apparently. see how much energy I have because there's a fucking cancel button in the way. Not very much is the answer. All right. <laughs> cancel. <laughs> um. Oh, cancel's back. I can cancel. Good of you to check in. There are no cards left. Whoops. Okay, we've got Pendibactive. I'm gonna play it like this, this way I can smite, smite, and something else to kill that sentry this turn if I'm getting attacked for a lot. If I'm getting attacked and can't block is what I should have said. And then smite kills this one next turn, cool. An anchor and a tungsten rod. Whenever you lose HP, lose one less. Wonderful. If you're in calm, draw three cards. Otherwise, enter calm. Okay. Do we like Tungsten Rod? Is Tungsten Rod a good one? Is Strike or Battle Him better? 9, 24, 33, 45, 57. Nine plus thirty six is forty five. I don't know, I'm sort of fucked. I do have potentially six energy next turn. A lot of energy. Guess we do this then. Power I played is just scry. Free every turn, yeah. Eruption. If I play this, I'll have five energy left. I have Peneb. I'm good. I'll just do this. Cool. Multiplicative damage scaling. Whenever we enter a shop, we heal 15. Prey. 
in three mantra and shuffle a draw two into our draw pile. Does that go infinite by itself? Not quite. That does, just about. <laughs> The path to victory is Sneko Eye, apparently. Fair enough. Inner peace seems so broken. Am I wrong? I'm just gonna assume that that's really, really strong. Draw four cards? So many cards. Hey, Freddy Bob. Thanks for the sub. I'll get Bomo Show to you as well. die this turn or something. Tough luck. Oh my god. Uh, gain a little bit of energy maybe. Do this. This. One of these, one of these. Eruption upgrades to cost one energy, that is correct. Empty Mind 2. Empty Mind is an uncommon now. That cancel button is very irritating. I kill next turn? I actually just kill next turn. Okay. Close fight, slime friend. At the start of your turn, gain an energy and increase this gain by one. Whenever you scry, gain four block. That's really strong. Six block? Okay. I'm taking that over uh, an intangible. I think that's all right. Serene Eevee. Thanks for the Twitch Prime. Ogbo Mushu to you as well. Uh, I don't know if my like upgrades are super important maybe I have no idea I don't know what to do let's do this the reform is hilarious to you it doesn't seem super great Probably not being attacked here, right? It wouldn't attack me. I, I, I doubt it would attack. Ow! <laughs> um. Unbelievable. That your inner piece is actually good. Thank you. 
Valuate. Gain six block and shuffle an insight into your draw pile. Pass. So we just need a way to um, remove cards from our deck, right? But isn't there like no way to remove cards from your deck anymore? I have a smiling mask. That's my way to remove cards. Genius. Outplayed. Inner piece is outmaneuver or skim. Sort of. Entering calm isn't quite outmaneuver. In fact, it's not even slightly close to being outmaneuver, but they both have two energy in them, I guess. Okay, Sands of Time, no. Wheel Kick, deal 15 damage and draw two cards. Whenever you would, whenever you scry and would discard this card, add it to your hand instead, no. Whenever you switch stances, gain three block. Maybe. Maybe. Predator, but right now. Yep. Can I like cut through fate? Yeah, cut through fate's very good. I think it might be the best common in this class. Mental Fortress, I guess? I don't know. That through fate is a block card with Nirvana. Yep. Foresight's gives Scry six. Do I beat Act Two Elites? It seems harder than Act One Elites by a long way. Oh, presumably, like, play this before that. I have, um, Tungsten Rod anyway, so I don't think it matters. smaller attack there. Zero, 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 zero. This class is just like, I don't know. I think I maybe just very, very, very heavily discard 
uh, dislike the way that Scry feels. I think that might be what it is. It's hard to tell what it is exactly that makes you... not love playing a class or whatever. Sometimes if you think that you dislike a game because of some reason, you're like very, 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 very wrong about what you actually dislike about the game. And I feel that way with Watcher. I feel like, like I can sort of make guesses at why I'm not enjoying this, but I'm not sure that they're right. I wonder how big a deal not having all the art yet is to me. Don't really know. Talk to the hand, flurry of blows. We want both of these. Which one's better? I think talk to the hand might be better right now. You think Scry specifically feels a lot better with art, maybe? The fact that when you seek, you click on the cards that you want, and when you scry, you click on the cards you want to discard, I think is, like, super wrong. I think that that may actually make, like, a very large difference in how much I enjoy playing with those mechanics. Right now, I might also just not be enjoying playing this run because I have thing the jig, runic dome can be an awkward one to play with. Did I get block for that? Even though I didn't scry. I think I did. For the kill here. This is irritating. That cancel button is super irritating. Uh, yeah, I have a nib though, so. Good fight. Another talk to the hand, I guess. Lantern seems fine with gambling chips. We can get some sort of big turn one.
I'm also probably just like building decks wrong, which probably makes them less enjoyable to play. Hate cards that make you do more stuff at the start or end of your turn, with well laid plans being the only exception. What is it about well laid plans that makes it okay for you in your eyes? decided to keep just lucky there. Not sure why I did that. Maybe it's because it's a good card. So it scries and blocks. It blocks for more than the defend. Hmm. Maybe it's okay. We are talking to the hand a lot in this run. Do I have four of them? I think I might have four of them. Ah. Establishment. Whenever a card is retained, reduce its cost by one this combat. So that still looks like it's the same card as before. I guess I removed defense. Oh my, I, the last four cards I've added to the deck are talk to the hand. <laughs> That's awesome. That's wonderful. Um, hey, Radishin. Um, I'm going to stream for a bit longer. Just lucky seems pretty good when it blocks for like 10 or whatever. Oh -oh. Made establishment rare, looks like it. Talk to the hand, because the face don't care no more. We're so dead. I don't know about that. Sounds unfortunate if true, though. Describe would be worse if you could reorganize instead of discard more clicking. What I want from this interface is like click drag, click drag to there, and then confirm buttons like here or something instead of all the way over here. I think the confirm button being over here is like actually somewhat distressing to me. I am entangled. All right, we can't play attacks. Probably don't want to tax them. I should have used the stance potion before I used empty mind. Yeah. 
like MTG Arena, maybe? Is that how it works in MTG Arena? I don't know. Possibly. Uh, I seem to have a bunch of block. I think we're good. There's a feeling of treading water every turn. There's a feeling that I have a bunch of cards and I play them and they make me do nothing. Is that worse than defect? Press E to win. Well, it's like press like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, blah, 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 blah. like it's just press all of the buttons over and over and over again to win <laughs> instead. It doesn't particularly feel like I'm choosing between cards to play every turn it feels like i'm just playing them and then i'm not getting stronger so the fight takes a long time and i keep on playing the same cards over and over again maybe eventually they like do a little bit more but it just feels like it feels like treading water i don't know Does Champ remove Talk to the Hand when he enrages? He does, right? Probably, presumably. Maybe we can only like play one of those to start. I don't know. options you won with a smite build the other night. doesn't feel like she has any scaling. Yep, I agree with that 100%. The scaling that she does have, I think she does have some scaling, but I think it's very, very, very awkward. I just dead. I'm okay with just being dead. Can you just kill me? Cool. Feels like so much work to be strong. These cards were never good. Like, if you're going to try to go infinite, these cards are fine, but I didn't really try to go infinite there. I think every card in my deck is scaling after a certain point. Like, I took this for scaling. We have one, two three so-so commons and then like this is scaling scaling 
scaling, scaling, four scaling cards, scaling, and then some card draw to put it in play. But I couldn't scale to a point where I was like... <laughs> I couldn't scale to a point where I was dealing damage to champ in phase one with those cards. I tried mantra heavy decks. Yep. Talk to the hand seems like a garbage card. I don't think so. Locking four per turn or whatever seems pretty good. Doesn't feel like she scales. She either goes infinite or high burst and stall. Yeah, you try to scale like one big turn to be gargantuan. You can do that. But you need like very specific cards to do that and you need very specific cards to go infinite and they don't have that much overlap and other than those two things the entire card pool doesn't help really This card never helps you go infinite and never makes for a big burst turn, really. You need retain attacks for your big burst turn, right? So what does this card do? Like, you can take it in Act 1 to help kill sentries or whatever, sure, but what is... How is it useful in any way to how you're trying to win your fights in Act 3? I don't know. What's my favorite kind of cheese? I'm not sure I can give you one answer to that question. Two times and three times multipliers of wrath and divinity are in a weird place. They're too strong early and too weak later. Yeah, if you don't kill something with that... If you don't kill something with damage, your damage doesn't do very much in fights. Unless you're like fighting transient. This is one of those games where an enemy on 1 HP attacks you for just as much as an enemy on 400 HP, so... If you spend a turn trying to put something... It's the same as the like Whirlwind problem for Ironclad. I think the Whirlwind problem is the easiest way to illustrate it. If you have Whirlwind Plus on Ascension Zero with Ironclad, it's an incredible card because it like one-shots the Darklings and all this bullshit. And then once you raise the difficulty, all of a sudden Whirlwind becomes a pretty bad card most of the time because sinking your entire turn into putting all of the enemies on 5 HP is not very good. So if they all died because they had lower HP, that would have been great, but they don't. That's what Act 3 feels like with the Watcher to me. Feels like my entire class is Whirlwind. <laughs> Divinity is everything with her now, only way to do any damage. Hmm. Dog. Thanks for earning yourself a sub with quest mode. Wallop is a great watcher card. I like Wallop. 
I may say what I said about Bowling Bash to most other characters, damage commons. Yeah, but the other characters aren't trying to go infinite or make one big turn. Like, the Silent can play... The Silent can play a Dagger Spray, because it's completely fine. Because Dagger Spray does not particularly prevent my Silent deck from later playing a Crippling Cloud plus a Footwork and a Noxious Fumes in the same fight or whatever. And those three cards will win me the fight. When coupled with, like, anything else. And I draw my Dagger Spray occasionally, but, like, whatever. I maybe don't play it, or I play it and it's mediocre. I can have cards like that in my Silent deck and they feel fine. But when I have a player watcher deck and I put Bowling Bash in it, it feels just fucking disgusting because every single thing that I do that's strong is reliant on combinations of cards which have to take up significant deck density to actually work. I think the class doesn't have enough card draw for how much energy it has. I think that's one thing that makes it feel awkward. Cut through fates, pretty nice for helping that. I didn't have any cut through fates in that run. Maybe Sanctity is a really good card. It's just like, I don't know, you spend one energy on doing something other than the thing you're trying to do in a turn and it just feels like an awful energy to spend. Didn't have any big damage card to do damage in Wrath form. I had, um... Smites. I was adding a smite to my hand every single turn. That was the idea. Let's you turn your energy into 24 damage. When you're in Wrath form. We won plenty of fights like that. I had a pen nib too. But if the, if the thing I have to do is, like, just do more than 24 damage for one energy on one turn, there's a very limited number of ways to do that, right? Bowling Bash is very strong and infinites are very rare. Sure. I don't know. Obviously, I'm talking about Ascension 20 going for heart kills, right? So, my view on game balance is in a very small corner of reality relative to most people's engagement with the game. I think of Rushdown, whenever you enter Wrath, draw two cards. I don't know. How do I have an unknown card? This is the first run I've played in the last week, so it's probably a card that was added in the last week that I just haven't seen yet. Seems Scry is supposed to be half of Watcher's draw. Yeah, I don't really know what to do with Scry. Like, most of the time when I start a turn and I have my scry from the power that I was playing on turn one of that run, I just, like, look at the cards and, like, oh, okay. Don't feel like I'm really gaining a huge amount out of it. Although, with that deck, I maybe didn't have a particular card I was drawing to ward. Read Wish. Yep. Wish does things. Oh. Be done streaming in a bit. Back and stuff. I have the 15 damage draw two on common. My mouse over reach heaven. Sure.
just feels so weird. I don't know. What's the card that's like spot weakness or deadly poison or defragment? Like, what's the card that I play and then I'm stronger? Not like I gain an extra four block per turn, but like the core cards of my deck do more now. Or every turn I output more damage or something. I just don't know what it is. I guess Wish does that, sort of. I can draw more cards, but I don't know what I do with the cards that I draw, really. Like two of my rares do that, my wish and my nirvana. But nirvana is like only for very specific cards. Exhaust has like 33% of the card pool on ironclad exhaust, so that's your like baseline for feel no pain. Feel no pain has lower numbers, right? But feel no pain is about 30% of the card pool, and this card pool is. One, uh, two, three, four, five. It was like, feel no pains about. Four times the card density, plus dazes and voids. In terms of turning your cards on. I feel like Feel No Pain's interaction with like medkit and wounds and stuff is super real too. I've had a couple of times where Scry has interacted with relics. I think there's one relic in the game that it does interactions with. What's the other stuff? Talk to the hand, sort of, except that like Champ purges it and yeah, <laughs> bosses purge it. A little bit awkward. Mental Fortress, kind of, but like you have to have so much card density for that to do a lot. I mean, it's going to be like a Metallicize, probably. Metallicize is inoffensive. Master Reality, a little bit. Alpha is great scaling as well. I think Alpha is very slow scaling, but it does scale, that's true. Alpha doesn't, like, make the other cards in your deck better, though, right? Like... <sighs> I think some of the enjoyment for me of playing the other classes is that Spot Weakness makes a lot of my Ironclad cards that had one identity in Act 1 suddenly have a stronger identity in Act 3. My Spot Weakness makes it so that my Sword Boomerang is no longer just a decent damage card for getting through Holy Fights, but now all of a sudden it is a super heavy hitter against Time Eater. And that's really cool. It's fun to see Sword Boomerang being a card that can have more than one roll over the course of the run in that way. My Silence Catalyst makes it so the Deadly Poison that I took because it's a good card to kill Lagavulin with is all of a sudden now a card that I'm trying to play a couple of times in order to kill the heart, and it's dealing way, way, way more damage. So, like, my strategy has evolved where one card that was good for a reason at the beginning is now good for a different reason at the end. I'm just struggling a lot with those sorts of identities for cards here. Maybe there's something with her Tain like that? But what, like, 
just isn't that much that retain cards do that's more than what they do at the start. I don't know. Maybe like retain plus divinity feels that way. I want to talk about my modded character? No, not right now. The biggest thing is making all your cards cost zero with meditate and the power. Yeah, that's one of the ways to go infinite, right? Is retain a card plus some um, establishment. Make your like card draw cost zero. Spirit Shield, I think, is a card that could feel that way. I'm not sure how well Spirit Shield fits into winning strategies on Ascension 20. Hey, Mr. Mulugulu. What's the support for stance swapping? One, two, do we count the exit cards? I don't know. One, two, three. Four. Has this gone down? I feel like this has gone down. Five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm not counting mantra right now. Maybe we should be counting mantra. One, two, three, four. No, Silent doesn't need that many block commons to feel like Footwork has an identity in the class. I guess you start with five defends, though. Silent has one, two. Silent only has two poison commons. That's crazy. Three, four, five, six. They all do so much on their own, though, right? I'm not counting Flex's strength. So Ironclad has zero strength scaling in commons. One. Two. Two strength cards in uncommon and like a demon form. Is that it? Limit break as well. Ironclad has four strength scaling cards, but like because of mechanically what they do, Ironclad feels like a class which, which is like defined by strength scaling, and all of the cards in the class feel like they can be analyzed according to how strong strength scaling is. Eruption becomes a good card because strength scaling lets you win fights fast enough that you don't need to play your skills more than once. Rupture, five. <laughs> Red Skull is unique to Ironclad. That's true, you can get strength scaling out of relics too. That's like, that might be some of the issue, honestly. There's no relic that stance swaps, right? Is there? I don't think there's any relic that stance swaps. If there were like, how many relics are there that um, do something with poison or strength, I wonder? The relic that starts in calm, it's true. Stuff like Shuriken and Kunai. 
and Vajra and oddly smooth sound and all that. I don't know, I just like, I struggle to understand a little bit why these don't feel like they are fitting together. But maybe it just needs more polish. Also found that Prismatic Shard is very good on Watcher. I feel like Prismatic Shard shouldn't be good on a character. I feel like... <laughs> that would be a red flag for me. If you're finding that Prismatic Shard is... is good in a card pool. What stat can Watcher edit? Our scaling is scry and block for things happening, right? Do we have damage scaling, really? We don't really have damage scaling. We can edit energy gained per turn. Oh, I didn't see brilliance. Brilliance is still here? Oh, it's ethereal now. It's the upgrade. Okay, gotcha. Wish does have strength scaling. Yep. Make your dreams come true. Make your wildest dreams come true. I like that. What's happening in the Blasphemy art? Blasphemy, there is a Sneko eye and it's being put in the trash can on a Windows desktop or something. Maybe the starter relic needs help. I've been trading the starter relic, which probably doesn't help very much with me feeling like the class has a clear identity when I'm playing it. I'll give it one more go. We have a vault. All right. Think about devotion as scaling. I don't know. Twenty one puts this at twenty three, which still needs eruption strike strike. So I guess we go defend vault. Maybe, maybe I'd die. Maybe I'd die to the bird. Devotion, at the start of your turn, gain two mantra. All right, let's try this. Ow, no, ow. Nine plus twelve plus twelve is good. Meditate is here. Do you think meditate over wallop? I have no idea. Maybe. I'm gonna trust that we don't. 
to remove, like, the fens? I don't know. Very weird to play a character where strikes are, like... Are they good? <laughs> Do defends ever get better on this character? Maybe that's my problem. Defends get insanely good on uh, Ironclad and Silent. And then Defect blocks so much that Defends being good is like irrelevant. Hmm. I don't know. Trash or defend before a strike in Act 1. Feels sort of odd to me. That's my general. General experience with devotion, I play it and then it doesn't do very much. Uh, I want one of the retained cards. Windmill Strike or Perseverance, though. get effectively halved in Wrath, and attacks get double. Yep. That's one way to think about it. Devotion's the slowest power in the entire game, right? Like, without any help. How much damage has Noxious Fumes done before this Devotion deals damage? It was like two, three, four, five. Noxious Fumes has dealt like 14 AoE damage by the time Devotion goes off. One Devotion and one Devotion plus. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do on my run where I, uh... end up just having half of my two card combos or whatever? Oh, I was in Thingamajig at the end of that. Another Volt. Two Volts. Back in your day, Phantasmal Killer and Outmaneuver took six turns to activate and you liked it. Wonderful. As it compared to Creative AI in terms of speed? I don't play a lot of Creative AIs in decks that don't have other things that make Creative AI faster. Do this. I feel like with Double Volt I meant to be okay. And a Wallop. Okay. Yeah, I don't know about that.
So now, whether I die or not depends on if I draw damage cards next turn. I can turn two energy into damage. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's gone now. All right, good. I want this thing. We'll say I want that thing. Once you started to be okay with ending turns on Wrath, the character felt better. Well, I couldn't do it at that point in that fight. But sure, in general, there are fights where I end turns in Wrath and those fights tend to feel a bit better. But like, I can't end this turn in Wrath, right? Doesn't matter how much I'd like to be able to. I will simply die. It should have been a Volt. Why? Could have gained block there, I guess. Volt exhausts when you play it. So playing it there and not getting the intangible seems pretty bad. I'm sure I played that wrong somewhere. Why can't I just like have a card that makes something vulnerable so my strikes deal more damage for a bit? Fresh joints. Yep. Fresh joints plus is really good, I think. The new card I haven't seen yet does that. Okay. There's one that gives five vulnerable when you're in Wrath or enters Wrath. Interesting. Maybe it's a power potion on turn one. Maybe I should have, yeah. And these cards have a great damage to energy ratio. That's true. They're all dealing 5 damage per energy, but like, they're meant to deal 15 because they go into Divinity or whatever. Sometimes they deal 15. Even when you get Divinity, you're back to square 1 next turn. It feels so weird that you just like leap Divinity after you get Divinity to me. Like, why? I don't get it. If there's some, like, chase thing that you can scale up to be able to do... Like, fights don't go for an infinite number of turns, right? So... <sighs> 
This is going to be very white. Sorry about that. So as turns increase, like Ironclad scales something like this. Just in terms of damage output, Ironclad scales something like that. Silent... This is damage per turn. Maybe it's more useful if I draw it like that. This damage dealt over the course of the fight. Silent scale, something like that. Defect scale, something like that. Watcher, like, does... I don't know. Like... Watcher roughly scales like that, I think, is my understanding of how Watcher scales toward the end of the fight. Like on turn 15.2, you're a bit stronger than on turn 15.7 or whatever. Very confusing to like pilot. It just makes me very confused as a player. I'm expecting my strategy over the course of the fight to leave me in a position on like turn 8 where my cards are strong and I'm outputting good stuff. But yeah, <laughs> your your partial sum can't go down. Can it? Maybe it can. <laughs> Maybe it can. Sometimes we're doing something on turn negative five in this graph. I'm not sure what that means either exactly. Deva form seems pretty good for divine heavy decks. Lets you play some huge turns pretty quickly as long as you have some draw. I think, like, your huge turn leaving you with an advantage on board is very important for me to feel like I'm playing a game that interacts with the enemies in the fights. If my huge advantage turn doesn't do something on board, it's really hard for it to be different when I'm fighting one enemy versus when I'm fighting a different enemy. And a huge amount of my joy in playing this game is that when I fight Reptomancer, the way that I generate an advantage is importantly different from how I generate an advantage when I fight Time Eater. I complain about Time Eater sometimes because like it's sort of boring to press end turn with defect or whatever. But the fact that my decks have very deliberate different strategies for beating Reptomancer and Time Eater and the Heart is really important to me as a player. It makes the game really fun. But if my big turns don't let me leave things on the board, I don't know how to do that. Because my big turn just gives me damage. And there's no way to make the damage different against different things. So for defect, I might be choosing between filling my orb slots, using my big turn to fill my orb slots with AoE lightning orbs against Reptomancer, or frost orbs against Time Eater, or not bother filling my orb slots right now and play powers so that I can scale more quickly against the heart. And those three things are very different and feel very different and leave me in a place where I get to play the rest of the fight and make interesting decisions and stuff. But I can't. I can't leave anything on the board with the Watcher. I, I don't get to make a decision like that. I can sort of leave things in hand, but they're like smites. Doesn't, they don't do much. <sighs> I think that's some of my struggle. I think I play... I think one of the reasons that I do very well on like Ironclad and Selen and Defect is that I, I like play them against Time Eater and Reptomancer and the Heart. Like I, 
I don't come into any Ironclad or Silent or Defect run and think I want to build a Strength deck or whatever. I think these are the enemies in the game. This is how I'm going to beat them. Maybe I'm just needing to do that more as the Watcher. But so much of the stuff as the Watcher feels like it's just not interacting with that. Like it's just very self-referential. I don't know, what's the card here that's the thing that I should do to beat Reptomancer that's unique? Because on Ironclad, it's Immolate, and on Silent, it's Crippling Cloud, and on Defect, it's Electrodynamics, and I can tell you that in like two seconds, but I don't know what it is here. Include? Like, <laughs> Decker Spray Plus? Maybe. I don't really know. <laughs> it's Bowling Bash. Kill one of the daggers for one energy. Got him. Crushed. Bowling Bash seems like an awesome way to deal like 120 damage to Reptomancer and then die. Is that what I'm doing with it? Am I killing Reptomancer instead of the daggers? Try another run with defends removed. We can do that, we can do that. I'm down. <laughs> Wait, try this card. Crescendo. Go infinite. Maybe just go infinite now.
That's going infinite mean. It means playing a cycle of cards, which never ends. You just keep playing it over and over and over again. I've not drawn very well in this fight. To the hand. Or the hand of perseverance or protect. They're all sort of okay, right? Probably need the damage for elites. Sort of makes sense to me. I'm gonna lift. If we die, we die. Do I enter Wrath right now? Before playing that, I might... 10 damage? With this, I mean. I'm a route! Thanks for the four months! Mugabumu show to you as well. This is 21, 21, and 27. Ended up not being necessary to use that stance potion. Oh well. I guess I don't want these cards. Just get in the way. Almost. Next time. Whenever a card is retained, reduce its cost by one. This combat. You can try to do that plus uh, meditate, right? I said I was going to remove a strike, though. Or a defend, rather. I feel like I should remove a defend instead more in keeping with what I claimed I was going to do. I have like one defend in my deck. <laughs> um, I feel like this is questionable, everybody. stone calendar could save me. Just dud. Oh, I wasn't dud because I have talked to the hand. I was on one. I probably would have actually won the fight too. Oh well. GG. Just a buff that I'm not used to so I didn't think about how I had it. 